welcome to the course of plant developmental biology again. So, in this class we will continue discussing molecular genetics of plant developmental biology. So, in if you recall previous class there we have discussed the forward genetics based approaches and how forward genetics based approaches are being taken up for analyzing uh, development uh, in case of plants. Now, we will focus on the reverse genetics based approaches. So, in reverse genetics based approaches here we have first we identify the gene and then we try to understand what is the specific function a particular gene or a group of genes uh, have uh, in, in a particular developmental processes. So, if you if you look this slide, so this process of reverse genetics can be uh, uh, studied in following steps. In first step what we aim? We aim to identify a gene of interest and isolate that gene of state uh, gene of interest for studying a part its function. Then second uh, step of this is that to analyze the expression pattern of this gene. So, here we are starting from a gene. So, we should know where exactly this gene is expressed particularly with respect to the developmental stages, developmental tissues, organs, whatever it is. Then once we identify the gene, we know the expression factor. Why we want to know the expression pattern? Because this will allow us to expect some phenotype in the tissue where it is normally expressed. Then we move ahead for functional characterization of this gene. There are different approaches which is being taken care most commonly we are taking the gain of function approach and we are trying to express a gene where normally it is not expressed and look what happens. This tells if a gene is sufficient for initiating any developmental program or not. Second approach which we take, we take loss of function approaches. In this study what we try, we try to uh, silence a gene or knock out a gene or knock down a gene and then the look what happens in a development. This allows us to understand uh, if a gene is necessary for a particular function. Then we move and we try to understand what is the mechanism behind a particular developmental role. This is being done by uh, studying the interaction of a particular gene. It can be genetic interaction, physical interaction with other uh, regulator or its regulatory interactions. Another very important thing, so if we want to take a reverse genetics based approach, as I said there are something which we have to fix first before identifying a gene. First thing what we want to fix is uh, developmental processes. So, you have to define this is very similar what we have done in the forward genetics as well. So, in forward genetics to identify a particular mutant or particular phenotype, we fix this process. Here to identify a putative genes, we will fix the process. So, if you are interested in looking for the meristem function or the genes which is responsible for organogenesis, determinacy or developmental transition, phase transitions. So, we will fix first the process. Then you want to specify, you would uh, like to specify what kind of gene you want to study. So, there are some genes which are directly involved in, in some biological process for example, cell division or some enzymes which are basically uh, controlling uh, uh, fundamental processes. And then second class of genes are regulatory genes. So, these genes are mostly regulating the activity of some, some of the developmental genes. And when it comes to the regulation, there are different step of regulation, gene regulation and at least uh, major uh, steps where you would like to look the regulation is transcriptional regulation. Here mostly we focus on the transcription factor, specialized transcription factor. Post transcriptional regulation, there are lot of developmental regulators which has been identified and they function after transcription like post transcriptional, mostly they are small RNAs. Then there are known developmental regulators which regulate uh, protein synthesis or translation of a particular messenger RNA and then post translational regulation where you uh, control the activity of a particular regulator by regulating or by modifying the protein through post translational modification. 
So, before starting any process we have to define this step by step, we have to fix our biological process, we have to fix type of genes, then we move and we try to identify kind of gene. So, we can take two uh, approach, one is called candidate gene approach where you can identify any single genes with a putative developmental functions. In second approach you can take more kind of global uh, genes which is called genomics. Here you do not identify a single gene, you identify a group of genes which are specifically present in a particular developmental processes and then you move ahead. So, what are the criteria which we look for identifying or for selecting a particular genes which might have some function uh, in the developmental processes. So, the, there are two important parameter what we consider is first one is the homology based analysis. So, first thing what happens that uh, some of the model organisms their whole genomes are sequenced, if genomes are sequenced then study has been made forward genetics based study is quite advanced and then you can identify some genes which has already been shown for their some of the developmental function and then you can look in other uh, plant species, related plant species or in, in uh, other uh, class of plant and then you try to identify if there is any homologous gene for that particular regulator. So, for example, some of the regulators they make a kind of gene family. So, there are multiple genes for belongs to that family and sometime what happens the entire family is mostly regulating some kind of developmental pathways or they are broadly regulating multiple uh, physiological and developmental processes. So, you can look uh, gene family and then you can look the sequence similarity. So, if let us assume that you have one. Uh, one particular gene, uh, maybe in few slides I will show some of the example how this has been taken, but you can you can choose one gene which is uh, known to have some developmental function, then you can uh, you can take the sequences and try to find out what are the homologous gene in another related species. And then if there is a common functional domains, you can look for that. And then another thing is that you see the the relatedness which is called phylogenetic analysis. So, typically if a gene is having a high level of homology or if it is very related with a particular gene, you can expect that it might have a similar function in other species. So, this is uh, in silico approaches mostly bioinformatics approaches, this will help you to uh, uh, define some of the genes which you, you might take for the functional study. Then second important thing you can check the expression pattern. So, this is uh, 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 very important because if you are interested, let us assume you are interested uh, studying some gene which is responsible for floral organ development, then you would like to check the expression pattern and you will prefer a gene which might have a specific expression in the flower or some of the organs of the flower. So, you can check the organ specific expression and then you can check tissue specific expression even within the organ if you want to define a very specific function uh, at the tissue level, you can look for the expression pattern at the tissue level. If you are interested more kind of in the stage specific gene expression pattern, you can look up at different stages and then you can identify some genes which are present in one particular stage absent in another stage. And then you can, for example, if you if you identify a gene which is not expressed in the vegetative express, uh, stages, but it is expressed in the reproductive stages, you may expect that this gene might have some function during the reproductive stages. So, these two major approaches we take to define a gene and you can see some of the example how this, these approaches has been taken. For example, in, in, uh, in Arabidopsis thaliana a class of a transcription factor, MATS box containing transcription factor has been well studied and it has been identified that they play a very, very important role uh, in the floral organ development and floral organ patterning. So, this approach was used to identify some of the rice MATS box genes. For example, if you look this MATS 5, MATS 1 
and they have been taken for reverse genetics based approaches to show their specific function during rice flower development. Similarly, so as I said that uh, maybe in some of the future classes we will study how flower development is uh, studied in, in model dicot uh, Arabidopsis thaliana and there what we have found that we have found some uh, classes of genes particularly A class, B class, C class. So, this is uh, typically A class gene, then you have B class gene and C class gene and A class genes has been shown to regulate sepal and petal identity, B class genes are shown to regulate petal and stamen identity and C class genes are shown to regulate stamen and carpal identity. And then if you look the sequence similarity, homology, functional domain in other species, you may identify the homologous gene. If I take some example, for example, if you look this PI, PI is a typical B class gene which interacts with AP3 to specify petal and stamen uh, development in Arabidopsis. Now, their homologs like MATS2 and MATS4 has been identified based on the sequence similarity functional domain phylogenetic analysis in rice and when they have studied they have been studied in, in rice it was shown that actually they are involved in regulation of petal equivalent which is lodicule in rice and stem and development. Okay, but there is one interesting thing there might be lot of species specific variations as well. For example, there is only one PI gene in Arabidopsis, but rice the PI is duplicated, we have two PI like genes, MATS2 and MATS4. And when both of these were studied functionally, it was found that MATS2 is more important for petal equivalent development, whereas MATS4 probably is more uh, regulating stem and development. So, this is one approaches where you can identify a putative genes to study. And then coming to the expression pattern analysis, so expression pattern there are different ways to study expression pattern. Uh, typically people used to uh, do northern blot analysis in uh, early days when uh, genome or most of the genomes were not sequenced. So, it was more kind of hybridization based technique maybe we will uh, see sometime later. But what happens that if you if you see so what we are doing that we are extracting total RNA fractionating through the gel electrophoresis transferring on the membrane and then we are using a, an antisense RNA or specific uh, DNA or RNA probe which is radioactively labeled and then probing with it. So, it will go and it will hybridize with the, uh, the uh, messenger RNA which is specific for that probe and then you can detect through the uh, radioactive uh, detection method. For example, if you look some examples. So, this is one of the MATS gene and it has been shown that this is leaf, maybe sepal, petal, stamen and carpals. You can see that this gene is very specifically expressed in the carpal, but it is not expressed in all other tissues. Similarly, if you look these are different uh, genes and they are very uh, broad, uh, very uh, strongly expressed in the flower but they do not express or they express very weak in leaf and other tissues. So, this, this tells a kind of this is a kind of differential expression pattern. So, you can use the expression pattern. Now, we can expect that if I took this gene, I can expect that this gene might have some role in the carpal development. Whereas, this, this is a kind of general it has a flower specific expression. So, we can say that it might have some function in the flower. Then once you have defined a gene, next question is how to isolate the gene. To isolate a gene, if, if your model organism or if your plant species which where you are interested in, if the genome is not sequenced, then you have to take some approach to identify the gene because you cannot design a primer, you cannot do polymerase chain reaction. But if your genome is sequenced, then it is relatively easy you can design a specific primer for your gene, your all the sequence are known and you can PCR amplify. But let us take first example, if genome is not sequenced, then one way of isolating gene is using cDNA library or genomic library. What are these library? So, basically what happens that if genome is not sequenced, you can make 
their their library and how you can do that you can take either tissue specific cell or a particular organ whatever you are interested in you can extract total messenger rna or total genomic dna if you want to make genomic dna library you will extract total genomic dna but if you want to make messenger uh, cdna library you have to extract total messenger rna here this will provide the information of the expressed gene this will provide the information of the entire genome at the dna level for genomic library you take the dna do the partial digestion you can share it you can digest it and then you can fractionate you can choose what size of fragment you want to generate library similarly for messenger rna you extract total total rna from total rna you can you can isolate or you can specifically fractionate the messenger rna and then use this messenger rna to generate the cdna synthesis the typical way of generating cdna synthesis is so you know that a typical messenger rna in case of eukaryotic they have poly a tail and you can design a primer which is oligo dt this oligo dt is a reverse primer which will bind to the poly a tail of all messenger rna and then you can do reverse transcription process through which you can make dna from the rna so now your template is messenger rna and you are use doing rt and then it will make a dna so this is your dna so you can generate dna from the messenger rna take this cdna you can fractionate on on gel and you can choose what size of uh, library you want to prepare or you can prepare all the library and then you can use a suitable vector depending on the size of your fragment or size of uh, clones you want to generate and then digest this vector and do the ligation through ligation and transformation you can basically capture all the cdnas all the specific cdnas which are present in a particular tissue or in a particular organ or in a particular developmental stages and then you can you can clone them and put in form of uh, different libraries now since you have the library now you want to identify a specific uh, gene from that library so there are two way of doing it depending on then what kind of library you have made so one way of doing is colony hybridization and then plaque hybridization technology wise both the techniques are very similar what you do basically let's assume that you have library here and what you can do you can grow this uh, colonies on a plate and then you can do a replica plating so basically you can take uh, a, a membrane and you can basically replicate or you can make a replica plate of this particular plate and then you use this membrane cell lice and uh, bake it so that the dna which are coming from this dna rna anything which is coming from this bacteria they are getting uh, fixed or they are getting uh, attached with the membrane then take this membrane and hybridize with your gene specific probe and then you can detect it so let's assume if you do the hybridization and detection if this is the colony which is showing signal with your gene a using a probe against the gene a then you can assume that the corresponding bacteria or the corresponding colony might have a uh, fragment of a you isolate this colony isolate dna isolate cdna sequence and then you can identify your gene of interest for your functional study as i said if the genome is sequenced then probably isolating gene is uh, very easy you can do a simple pcr based gene amplification where you have to design a gene specific primer and you can that you can design so basically if this is your gene you can design a short uh, primers one primer which we call forward primer one as a reverse primer and then you can do a pcr amplification now you can clone a gene this is called gene cloning you can clone a gene and while you are cloning the gene you can either use the genomic copy or you can make a cdna genomic copy basically if you know and if you recall your basic molecular biology you know that in case of uh, eukaryotic genomes genes have exons as well as introns so if you use genomic dna as a template and if you use a primer and amplify the gene 
then you are going to amplify both exon as well as intron. Whereas, if you make cDNA, for making cDNA you are using space mature messenger RNA and in mature messenger RNA all the introns are already spliced out. So, if you use this method to amplify your gene, then here you are going to amplify only the coding region which is spliced already spliced and this will be without the introns. So, depending on your use, depending on the need, you might choose what template you want to use and this is the way you can basically identify or isolate a particular gene of interest. So, now you have defined your gene of interest where you want which you want to study through the reverse genetics based approach. Now, next step was that you have already uh, isolated the gene and then you can proceed for functional characterization that we will take in some other class. Another uh, approach which you can we are taking for uh, doing multiple gene identification is the genomic space approach. So, in genomic space approach what we do we fix our biological process our biological organ or question and then identify at the global level what all are the genes which are expressed or which are present there. So, the genomics basically you can uh, there are two classes of genomics structural genomics and functional genomics. In structural genomics what we do basically we genome we sequence the whole genome and then when you sequence the whole genome you can use some of the already sequenced uh, genome as a template and then you can do the genome organization. In genome organization you can basically identify the, uh, what are the genes, what are the coding region, what are the non-coding region, then you can do genome annotation where you can predict the gene through uh, using bioinformatics tool, doing the homology based analysis, using template of other known uh, sequences or reference genome as a known sequences and then you can predict the putative function or you can predict a putative domain or class of the protein all these kind of things. Then another important thing what we do in structural genomics is EST sequencing. EST is basically express sequence tag. So, here what you make basically you can determine a partial sequences of some cDNA and this you can fix in a different tissue, different stages and different conditions and this you can clone small fragment of the cDNA clone sequence to identify what are the genes which are expressed in a particular condition. So, if you look this is schematic diagram, so you can do that if you have a genome sequence you can do gene discovery, how you can do you can take the in silico gene prediction, EST sequencing full length cDNA which you can do as I said either by PCR. So, there are other methods as well, then you can do a gene functional annotation, you can do expression pattern analysis, in silico prediction homology based then mutant analysis we will look in, uh, in in other classes in future classes then protein protein interaction. So, this is a way how to move for the function uh, for the reverse genetics. Another genomics approach what we are taking is the functional genomic approach. So, here we first identify or we monitor gene expression and then we go for the functional characterization and then uh, trace out the mechanisms behind a particular process. Now, we will take one by one, if we have to start monitoring gene expression, then first thing what we you want to look that is there any organ specific gene expression or tissue specific gene expression. Organ specific gene expression you can do, you can check in different organs, this is called differential expression pattern which is present in some organ, absent in some organ it can be organ, it can be stages, it can be tissue whatever you want and then you can identify the differentially expressed genes or you will be more interested if expression of a particular gene is developmentally regulated. If gene is expressed everywhere probably that might not be very regulated and then we, we, we would be more interested in a gene which is specifically or present in a some condition but absent in most of the condition. Then you can study the tissue specific expression. In tissue specific expression you can even go and look the expression pattern in the organ. In the organ if you make anatomy of the organ do you want to uh, you want to look where exactly the gene is expressed which tissue it is expressed is more important. 
then as I said that if you want to study developmental stages, so one development comes after the next and then what you can do here, you can identify the onset of a particular gene. So, let us assume a gene is expressed in a particular development stage, but it is absent in the previous developmental stage. So, you can go and identify what is the first uh, developmental stage where this gene get activated or start expressing. This is called temporal expression pattern. Then we do promoter trapping, how exactly we do, we will discuss uh, in another class. So, what are the different way which we are using in the plant developmental biology to monitor gene expression? As I said that first way and this is the old uh, way what people were doing was northern blot analysis. So, uh, quickly if I, uh, I describe northern blot analysis, so we extract total RNA from two different organs, two different stages or two different conditions, run them on uh, gel and then we transfer the RNA on membrane and then you want to use a probe which is very specific for a particular gene, hybridize the membrane and then check the expression and see how the expression or amount of RNA varies across the tissues, across the organs. So, these are some, some of the example, if you look this has been done for some micro RNAs, micro RNAs 393 and micro RNA 171 and if you look different tissues root, leaf, stem, inflorescent and silly, it, it was used. So, the probe was used against this micro RNA and if you look it has been tested in wild type background as well as some of the mutant background and you can clearly see that first thing the, the macro RNA is present in some of the tissue, it is present in the leaf, it is present in the stem, it is present in the inflorescence and silic, but it is totally absent from the root. So, this tells the organ specific expression, so it is more kind of in the stem, uh, in the shoot system it is present, but it is absent in the root system. And then not only that, if you look these mutants, in mutants background the expression is getting reduced. So, for example, if you take the leaf case, so it is very highly present in case of uh, wild type background, but in muted background the expression is reduced. Similar kind of things you can check here for other micro RNA. So, northern blot is being used here, but this is like uh, as I said that we previously it was being used when uh, advanced techniques, technologies were not discovered because it involves a kind of radioactivity now though we have another method of non radioactivity, but this is more kind of laborious method. So, this is being used now in a very special cases, but this is not a kind of routine way of uh, checking expression pattern. Now, the more uh, quick and more easy to do uh, expression analysis is uh, reverse transcription PCR. So, in reverse transcription PCR what basically you are doing? So, you are extracting total RNA, then you are using some primer, reverse primer which can be oligo DT or it can be simply random primer and then you are doing reverse transcription to make cDNA and so if you have extracted total RNA from a particular tissue, then you will convert all the messenger RNA into cDNA from that particular tissue and then you can use some gene specific primer to do uh, PCR amplification from that particular pool and then you can see whether a genes are expressed or not. For example, if you look this gene, these are the RT-PCR products. So, you can see in a certain condition if you look in different tissues, these genes look quite stable. It is expressed in almost all uh, tissues like root as well as leaves. But if you look the different conditions, for example, when you are inducing with the salt are inducing in osmotic, when you do not induce the expression level is almost 0, but when you induce at different time point in root, then you can see that expression of these genes are going up. This you can monitor by RT-PCR and this RT-PCR is called semi-quantitative RT-PCR. So, here what you are doing? You are making cDNA, then you are doing some round of PCR cycle and then you are taking the end product of the PCR and running on the gel checking here. The drawback here is that you do not know after how many cycles the, the RT-PCR will start getting saturated. 
So, the now the alternate method which has come is a quantitative RT-PCR which is more kind of dye banding based assay here cyber green is very routinely being used and this case what exactly you can do you can basically monitor expression pattern more quantitatively and for example if you look these are the different tissues has been taken these are different genes and here you can design a gene specific primer and you can monitor expression pattern in a more quantitative manner for for different genes in different conditions so this is another very important techniques which is being used for this one so we will stop here for this class and in next class we will take further of the functional genomics based observation thank you very much